Adobe Firefly has been making waves lately, but a lot of people still don't realize it has a full generative fill tool built right into the browser version. And the crazy part is it works almost exactly like the one in Photoshop, but you don't need to download anything, and you don't even need to know how to use Adobe's pro-level tools to get started. This video is going to walk you through everything you need to know about how generative fill works inside Firefly and whether it's good enough to actually use for real creative projects. Let's start by opening up Adobe Firefly in the browser. Once you're logged in, you'll see a few different tools on the homepage. Go ahead and click on the one labeled Generative Fill. It's going to load a new workspace that looks pretty clean and simple. And that's a good thing, because the goal here is to make this powerful AI tool accessible to anyone, even if you've never used Photoshop or Illustrator. The first thing we're going to do is upload an image. You can drag and drop something from your computer or just hit upload image to pick a file. Try starting with a photo that has a clear subject and a bit of background space. We're going to remove part of it in just a second. Once your image is loaded, you'll notice you can zoom in and out and move around freely just like you would in any normal image editor. Now let's look at how object removal works. Click the selection tool and draw around the part of the image you want to remove. Don't worry about being too precise. Adobe Firefly will figure it out. Once you've got your selection, hit the Generate button. After a few seconds, Firefly will automatically fill in the area you selected with a context-aware result that tries to match the surrounding environment. You'll see a few different variations on the side. You can click through them to see which one looks best. And here's something important. If none of them are quite right, you can just hit Generate again and get a fresh set of results without needing to redo your selection. Already, this is starting to look pretty powerful. But what's impressive is how well it handles tricky textures and lighting. Try removing something from a patterned background or surface with shadows. In most cases, Firefly does a pretty decent job of keeping the result clean and believable. It's not always perfect, but it's definitely better than a lot of people expect from a browser-based AI tool. Let's move on to the next use case, extending a background. This one's super useful. If you've got a photo that feels a little too cropped or cramped, all you have to do is use the crop tool to expand the canvas outward, like pulling the edge of the photo to the side or the bottom. Then select the new blank area and hit Generate. Firefly will fill in that empty space with more of the scene, trying to keep it consistent with the original image. This works great for landscapes, city shots, interiors, basically anything with a repeating pattern or open space. If you've ever used Photoshop's Content Aware Fill or Generative Expand, this will feel familiar. But again, the big difference here is that it's all happening in the browser without needing any plugins or advanced settings. Now let's try something a little more creative, adding an object that wasn't there before. Start by selecting an area in your photo where you want to place something new. Then, in the text box, type what you want to generate. For example, let's say you've got a beach scene and you want to add a surfboard leaning in the sand. Just write a colorful surfboard leaning in the sand and hit generate. Within a few seconds, Firefly will try to blend that object into the scene using your prompt to guide the style and placement. This is where things get fun because you can start experimenting with really specific ideas. Want a red bicycle parked next to a tree? A glowing lantern hanging from a branch? A spaceship landing on a farm? It's all possible with a few words. Just make sure your selection area is roughly the right size for what you're trying to add and the AI will do its best to fit it in naturally. Sometimes the results will look amazing right away. Other times they'll be a little off. Maybe the angle is weird or the shadows don't quite match. But remember, you can always regenerate the output or try rephrasing your prompt slightly. And since it only takes a few seconds to test different versions, it's easy to fine tune the image until it looks the way you want. Now that you've seen how to remove objects, extend backgrounds, and add new elements with prompts, let's dig into how Adobe Firefly's generative fill actually performs in different situations and where it still needs some work. One of the first things you'll notice is that Firefly does really well with environments that have clean edges and natural textures. Things like skies, grass, sand, and water usually blend really smoothly when you're using generative fill. So if you're extending a sunset photo or adding a tree to a forest scene, the results are often pretty impressive right out of the gate. But it can get a little trickier when you're dealing with more complex surfaces or cluttered areas. For example, if you try to remove an object from a brick wall, 
Sometimes the AI struggles to match the pattern exactly. Or if there are overlapping shadows or multiple light sources in the photo, you might get weird edges or lighting that doesn't quite feel natural. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something to keep in mind, especially if you're planning to use the result for something professional. Another thing to know is that while Firefly gives you multiple variations for each fill, you can't currently fine tune things manually, at least not yet. You can't warp the result or blend it with a brush or adjust the lighting inside the fill itself. That's one of the key differences between Firefly and Photoshop right now. In Photoshop, generative fill is integrated directly into your layers and editing workflow, so you can tweak things in much more detail after generating them. In Firefly, what you see is what you get. That makes it super beginner friendly and fast, but it also limits how precise you can be. So if you're just experimenting, creating content for social media, or mocking up ideas, it's perfect. But if you're doing client work or preparing assets for print, you might find yourself wishing you had a bit more control. Now let's talk about one of the most fun ways to use generative fill to science, creative remixing. Instead of trying to make subtle, invisible edits, this is where you get bold. It's try selecting a huge chunk of the image and asking Firefly to completely transform it. You can change a boring sky into a galaxy, turn a car into a race car, or turn a street scene into a cyberpunk city just by changing your prompt. The results might not be photorealistic every time, but the AI is surprisingly good at interpreting themes and moods, especially when you give it a little creative freedom. This is also a great way to use Firefly for things like thumbnails, posters, or digital concept art. You can take an ordinary image and inject a completely new style or twist into it in just a few seconds. And because the UI is so simple, you can go back and try different versions without losing your work. Let's say you generate something that's close to what you want, but not quite right. One trick is to reselect that same area and write a more detailed prompt. Instead of saying a person walking, say, a man walking in a red jacket with a shadow to the left. The more detail you give, the better your results usually turn out. But sometimes, even changing one word can completely shift the output. That's part of what makes generative fill so addictive to use. It feels like a creative loop where every try gets you a little closer to the perfect result. Now you might be wondering, how does this stack up against Photoshop's version of generative fill? And honestly, they're both useful but for different reasons. Photoshop is still the better choice for pro-level editing, layering, and precise control. But Firefly is hands down the better option if you want to quickly test ideas, generate new visuals, or just have fun experimenting without opening a heavy program. And because it runs in the browser, it works on basically any device. You don't need a powerful computer or expensive software. That makes it a great tool for beginners, students, marketers, and even meme creators who just want to whip something up fast. To wrap this up, Adobe Firefly's Generative Fill is one of the most accessible AI image tools out right now. It's fast, it's fun, and it delivers better results than you'd expect, especially when you take the time to experiment with your prompts and refine your selections. It's not perfect, but it's improving fast, and Adobe is clearly putting serious effort into making this tool better with every update. If you haven't tried it yet, I'd recommend opening it up, dropping in a few images, and just seeing what it can do. Whether you're fixing mistakes, generating new ideas, or just seeing how far AI can go, this tool is definitely worth your time. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment with your thoughts. Let me know if you've used Firefly's generative fill before, or if there's another AI feature you want me to cover next.